Guys, as you can see, uh, we're out in the field here today. We're heading towards a 9320T. They called me and said that it uh, blew the fill plug out of the rear end housing where the oil goes there. Going down the uh, we're going down the center road that's on the other side over here to the left of us here. But as you can see here, these are hoops, what they call hoops, are over uh, strawberry nursery plants. And they've got some vented holes in them for uh, so the air can get in there. They used to do those without, uh, they, when they first started this, they, they didn't have holes in them and they got a lot of, oh, they got a lot of fungus and stuff growing inside there because they couldn't breathe and they, then they came up with this stuff here. It's a lot better, but they raise these plants up here in this colder environment up uh, here at like 5,000 feet elevation is where most of your strawberry plant, nursery plants come from. And what happens is the plant, um, the plant gets used to the, the colder environment and what happens is in the fall when they dig these plants out they'll chop the tops off of them with the chopper and they just dig up basically the crown and the root of the plant and they'll replant them down south or in the warmer climates all over the world basically these plants go everywhere I mean they go to Florida California they go to overseas markets and when they get down in that warm environment, after being in this cold environment and getting toughened up a little bit, they go absolutely crazy and they produce all kinds of fruit. So uh, it's kind of an ingenious thing there as the old guys came up with. They've been doing this stuff. It's really hit home here in the last 20 years. But I remember when I was a kid and this was, this whole valley where I live in was potatoes at one time until Mr. Simplot put us all out of business. But, um, uh, all the only guys that are still racing spuds around here, they got big contracts of free to lay and stuff like that, what we call chippers, but uh, for the most part, there ain't many spuds left around here. But uh, we're gonna get out here to this 9320T there, and we'll, I got a feeling the charge pump went bad on it, and the, the charge pump is, runs off the steering pump, and. And that sucks the oil out of the transmission, but plus there's a lube pump that supplies oil to the transmission bearings, to the top shaft bearings where the steering gear, the steering shafts are. And what happens is the charge pump quits pumping, and the steering pump keeps pumping. So it pumps oil, all the oil out of the transmission into the rear end, and eventually it gets over full. And while you're going along, it'll blow the uh, fill plug out of the rear end, and it'll look like a geyser going through the field there blowing hydraulic fluid everywhere so I'll be back with you in a minute when we get to this tractor and we'll right see now, what's going on. Here's the back of your transmission on this big bastard. Uh, there's the drive line going from your transmission to your rear end. This is your sour Danfoss steering pump. There's a little charge pump right back in here. Internal gear pump. And we're gonna go hook a gauge onto this pressure port right here and uh, fire it up and see what our pressure is. It actually takes a suction off. Oh, there's your suction line right here, and that goes right into your rear bottom of your rear end there. So, yeah. Let's see what's going on. Uh, left his zero to five hundred psi gauge about fifty miles away. So I have a a zero to one hundred psi gauge with me and a zero to ten thousand today. So, uh. I already pegged the 100 PSI gauge, so I know I'm gonna should have about 300 PSI. We'll see if we can kind of fire this thing up until we're at here. I need to find out what that uh, caution light's flashing there for. Put the jumper fuse in for the diagnostic port. See what kind of code we get. Let's go see what kind of pressure we got. Barely moving the needle on this thing. Pressure. 
So we got a steering motor that goes into the rear end housing. So I'm thinking that maybe the shaft seal on the steering motor has blown. And then every time you turn the wheel, I'm thinking it's blowing oil right through the steering motor back into the rear end, overfilling the rear end. So we got to pull the steering motor out and kind of hang it off the hoses is what I'm thinking and see if we can see that. Or we got to pull the case drain line off the motor and see if we see oil just pouring out of the case drain line. So I get my air compressor fired up and we'll blow all the dirt and crap off the steering motor and see if we can figure this thing out. Because right now it's looking like the steering pump and all that stuff is fine. Got the charge pump cover off. I'm not liking what I'm seeing. That plate there is all grooved up. These things should be perfectly smooth. And I'm, I'm just wondering if we've got something in the steering motor coming apart and coming back through the system and taking out the steering pump. So here's our internal gears. This eccentric part here this pin has to be located over here every time you can't get this wrong because you can change they've got another hole for left hand rotation and right hand rotation on these pumps so you got to get this pin and in, in, in the proper hole when you go back together with it let's take the shaft out I'll take the internal gear pump out of it and let's look at it well I don't know it ain't looking that great to me the outer housing there where the eccentric ring is not all chewed up. That's usually the part. We'll look at the gears here. Let me put the phone down here and we'll see if we can figure this out. On this 9320T. Um, this thing takes a suction off the rear end. And there is no filter between the charge pump and the rear end. The only thing they have is a screen. So I went up to a hydraulic shop and I got a suction filter. And I built a base here for it, and we're going to get it and uh, bolt it to the frame of this tractor. And I've got a bunch of fittings and hoses to where we can filter this oil before we put this new charge pump in. I told the owner there's obviously something in the rear end coming apart, you know, that's contaminating the system. But I'm going to be honest with you, I can't understand why in the world John Deere would suck oil for a $6,000 hydraulic pump through a nasty ass rear end housing why not pull it off the bottom sump of the transmission something where there was clean oil because anybody that's ever been into a rear end knows how much metal and silvery looking crap gets in the oil so just a really bad design so um, we're going to see if we can at least save this pump before the rear end goes out on it so we're just trying to get him going where he can finish planting here so I'll be back to you when we get all this thing plumbed and get it in we uh, finally got our whole filtration system made and put in this tractor and uh, we've run it down the road and back we're gonna run it tomorrow I put a new charge pump in the back of the steering pump too oh let me climb in here and show you what we did oh. okay all right guys well there's our filter and our filter base we made and we just uh, Welded her to the frame, unplugged the battery cables, and welded the there to the frame, and we had to take the hose that came out of here, and then we looped it around. I don't really like the looks of that hose. I hope that thing don't suck air. But I used the original hose, and I, I routed it on the other side of the drive line because it's got a 90 degree fitting down there, if you can see it. And I looped it back around to the inlet of the filter base here, and I took some inch and a quarter suction line and looped it around and came in the bottom of the pump it's kind of hard to do some of this when I mean, you just don't have the fittings you just got to improvise if you want to get the thing going for the guy but uh, he's happier than shit so uh it's all that matters but uh we got her we got her uh, running and that's the important part and now our oil is filtered here's where here's where your steering uh, your charge pump goes and i dropped a metric bolt down in the sand and I'll be damned if I can find it I'm going to come back in the morning and put a another bolt in there but uh yeah they'll uh they'll go plowing and ripping with it tomorrow and uh we'll see if uh hopefully everything will be fine um 
we started it up, there wasn't any tar low. Usually, if there's low charge pressure, these will throw a code because here's your charge pressure switch right here on top of this steering pump. This is not a John Deere pump. This is a Sauer Danfoss yeah, steering. Never pump. start having charge pump failures. You know, this this pump takes a suction right out of the rear end. Okay, the way this thing works is um, that that supplies oil to your transmission and to your this little internal gear pump supplies oil to everything here so it's not real high pressure it's only about 300 psi but it's quite it's it's like i think it's like uh 10 12 gallons a minute something like that it's got to be actually more see it's it has to pull more oil out of the rear end than the lube pump for these steering shafts which comes in through this three-way orifice set up here has to supply it has to pump more oil or it's going to overfill and blow out the vent so well i appreciate you guys watching if uh, hopefully you learned something on steering system on a john deere and um uh, it's a little better i think it'll be a little better now with this high flow suction filter and you know it, he's got something going on in this rear end and he knows it you know he's just trying to get by with the planning and then we're going to tear the top end off and see if we can look at the bearings and the ring and pinion in there and see if we can find anything in there but we're just trying to you know all they've got is a suction screen and that screen's not very fine meshed to where it comes into this pump so this is a six thousand dollar pump we put on we put this pump on last year because it wouldn't steer so um uh we just want to save this six thousand dollar pump that is a very important part because if you if you got stuff coming into this part of this charge pump and your gears start getting chewed up. You've got shit coming through from the rear end coming into this. And uh, hopefully we got her we got her solved. So alright guys, I appreciate you watching.